This time on Norfolk Perspectives, we're having a shredding event at Food Bank. I can't wait for that one. The Nutcrackers coming to Norfolk and Moonlight and Mistletoe. It's a great event that I tried to visit. You'll find out why. And the Norfolk Admirals are in town, and you got to see them go after those hat tricks and everything else they do in hockey. Stay tuned right here in Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. We're having a shredding event. I can't wait, but I'm a little confused because Abby Weber with the uh, food bank, what are we shredding? Well, we'll be shredding uh, documents, tax oh, documents, I'm relieved. personal okay. documents. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no shredding of cheese. No shredding. I was going to say. Look, although shredded cheese would be kind of nice. Would be nice. Let's talk about uh, the current situation at the food bank. Kind of tough, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. We're just coming out of the summer. Um, it's a very challenging time for us. Not many people are thinking about the food bank um, during the summer months. We're headed into the holiday season, which is always much more busy for us. Um, so we're very grateful to William E. Wood for kicking us off with, with this great shredding event. And that was an awesome toss <laughs> to, to Susan Murphy and Gail Savacco, mm -hmm. both with William E. Wood. Yes. Yes. I knew she was with William E. Wood, but you're keeping it well hid. Well, you know what I did? I left my name badge in the car, so I apologize. There's a rule about that. I know there's there? a rule about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, why, why the food bank? Food bank because of the need. People are needing food, and where are they going to find it if we don't donate to them? That's right. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to put it right out on the table because you're the military team, the focus, mm -hmm. and Wamey Wood has done awesome things for a long, long time. Absolutely. About the military. Absolutely. But... You know, the military has uh, defended our country. Yes. Veteran, wife of a retired military person. Not quite. Not quite, Not but quite. you were related to a military person. Yes. Okay. They, they served our country, and yet they're the most vulnerable right now, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that why, is that one reason why you're motivated to serve the military? I'm very motivated um, because when you see the need, when you see what's happening to people, then you say, okay, I've got to do something about this. This is important. I'm doing fine. My sons are doing fine. Everybody's doing fine. I want everybody else to have enough to eat. Mm -hmm. It's important. And, and Abby, you're, you're seeing people come through the food bank now who may have never done it before? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we, we have people who used to be donors of ours that are now looking to us. They might have lost their job. They might be laid off and are now working two part-time jobs and not making as much as they used to. So we're seeing all kinds of different situations um, come to us. Okay. Okay, uh, Gail, let's talk about the shredding. Now that, okay. I've got, now okay. that I can relax and know <laughs> yes. it's, okay. it's documents, let's, who came up with the idea of having a shredding event? I'm not really sure. Four years ago, uh, we held our first one, and it was extremely successful. Uh, I wish I had the numbers. I know we, we had donated thousands of pounds of food along with cash donations as well. Mm -hmm. um, cash donations are really nice because they can actually, for every dollar that's donated, they can provide three meals for every dollar. So the cash donations go far too. So um, somehow, we came up with the shredding event, and we held the first one, and it was an nor'easter. Pouring down rain. Yes. Oh, no, yes. there's nothing worse than wet paper being shredded. Well, I can imagine what that would well, be like. It was, but it was extremely successful. And mm -hmm. what was um, really nice was the outpouring from the community that came and, and participated and made the donations. Um, we filled the truck with food, and um, I'm sure that it went a long way because, once again, if you know, we got a nor'easter, so that meant we was right about this time of year. Um, mm -hmm. We do one each year. And we're hoping that it, with each year, as the word goes out, that then people will donate even more, will have greater participation. Of course, being able to come on here, we're hoping to get the word out even further. Um, and so the event itself is going to be on November 2nd, mm -hmm. uh, held from 10 till 1. The location we've been able to um, establish, thanks to Susie Wentworth and her team at Pembroke Mall, is uh, we've got the parking lot behind Target at Pembroke Mall. Okay. So we'll set up there, and typically um, we've got volunteers that'll be working, directing traffic. Some will be um, taking the donations of food. Some will be gathering the documents that usually go into these big bins and go straight into the trucks and get shredded. Often, the person driving the car and making the donation doesn't even have to get out of the vehicle. Mm 
Mm -hmm. It's almost like a drive-thru. It, we go it goes really smooth, go and yeah. um, that's you know what we try to shoot for. But it's uh, it's something that we really enjoy doing. And you know when you talk about the need for the military, um, I can promise you that somewhere in that line for that food bank, there's either a prior service member, a mm -hmm. retiree. Um, a disabled member, someone with some sort of a previous connection or current connection to the military that has the need. And we hope that by us doing this and with our ties to the military that, you know, um, they realize that there are people out there that care and that they feel welcome to come take advantage of it and, you know, don't feel a loss of pride over it. What, yeah, and I was going to say, because I, you know, I, my dad was a retired Marine Corps Master Sergeant, uh, so you mm -hmm. talk about pride. But it's not about pride. It's really no. about service, and it's really about helping. Abby, what kind of food would you like to see that day? Um, definitely any types of non-perishable items, and okay. really what we're trying to focus on are healthier items. So lower sodium products, lower sugar products. Um, we know that if people are in need of our services, they don't have access to usually buy healthier items. So the healthier mm -hmm. items we can get, the better whole grain pastas, that type of thing. And then with cash, th that's where you can go out and get the more perishable things? Absolutely. We can go out and purchase the fresh produce and those types of items. Um, this coming year, we'd really like a lot of our food that we are distributing to be fresh produce. So that's where the funds really kick in for us. Well, what better way to get ready for Veterans Day but to yes. really celebrate <laughs> yes. our, the work our veterans mm -hmm. have done and, and yeah. really show our appreciation by uh, getting some documents shredded, but bring some. And if you don't have any documents to get shredded, just bring the food over there. Yes. Bring the food yes. over there. Absolutely. Stop by, make a donation. Anything is appreciated. Um, the way it's set up is for uh, three donated items. You can have up to three bags or three boxes of documents shredded. So um, that's a pretty good exchange on, sure on your donation. Well, just don't quit at three. Bring, right. bring all the food you mm -hmm. got in your Hold pantry that. and then go out and buy some new. Thanks <laughs> a lot for everything that you guys are doing to bring, bring in awareness, but more importantly, bring food, and, food into the warehouse. Absolutely. Thank you. When Thank we come you. back, it's that time of year. So guess what? The Nutcracker is coming right here to Norfolk Perspective. Stay tuned. It's easy and safe to roll together on Norfolk's roads. This is one of Norfolk's new Sharrows. Sharrows remind motorists to slow their roll and treat bikes like other vehicles. Bikes have just as much right to the road. If you can't pass by more than two feet, slow down and wait. They also remind bicyclists to know their role by traveling with traffic and obeying all signals and signs. It's up to all of us to share the road because we roll together. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Well, we're talking all about the Nutcracker and Ballet, and there's also, oh, we need to include you in the conversation. Thomas Garrett, a dancer with the Richmond Ballet. Yes, sir. So how long have you been dancing? Oh, I started dancing when I was 11. Um, Ele wait a minute, 11 that's kind of late to start, isn't it? Um, you know, not for, not for boys. For really? girls, that's a little bit late, but boys usually start a little bit later. Um, myself, I, I started playing baseball and basketball and then eventually transitioned into, into ballet because I loved the athleticism of it. And it wasn't until I was much older that I really took to the artistic side of it. Okay, and then there's Brett Bonda, who is the managing director for the Richmond Ballet. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, you were telling me in pre tapes so I'm going to tell everybody now because we're including them in our conversation. You are a dancer too. Yeah, I actually came to Richmond Ballet. Um, Many years ago, this is actually my 29th year with the Richmond Ballet. Holy moly! I, I know, isn't that amazing? Um, like I, I came when I was five. Right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I believe uh, you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I came as a dancer in the company, and I danced for 10 years, and I transitioned into the education role, and now the managing director. Okay, now once a dancer, always a dancer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, which is why you I just think kind of scale it down a little bit. Well, yeah, and I think what I like about in the managing director role that I'm in now is I have the perspective from the art artistic side as well, because I came from the artistic side now into the management side so it's been a nice transition for me so you're not gonna be one of those 80 year old teachers no not at the moment I'm not I remember, <laughs> I'm remembering that one that had my daughter yeah, yeah I don't no. know her name Pat. No, I don't think so. so so what's the first thing to go uh, well the first thing for gentlemen actually is more like our my knees my knees and my shoulders because of the jumping and mm -hmm. the lifting and stuff why do you like keep that. looking at him mm -hmm. Well, because he's Nothing healthy. Nothing has gone he's, yet. He, he's healthy right now, so <laughs> I don't want to jinx him, you know? So. <laughs> okay. The Richmond Ballet in Norfolk on December 6th and 8th doing the Nutcracker. Yeah. Uh -huh. Where do I begin? Why the Richmond? How are you guys getting here? 
Well, um, it's not too far down the road, and okay. we are we are Rich and Ballet, the State <laughs> Ballet of Virginia. And um, what we want to do is we have an incredible production. Our Nutcracker is probably our largest production um, that we do, and um, we wanted to share that production um, throughout Virginia. And why not Norfolk? Um, you have a great um, dance community here, especially through Todd Rosenleaf and what he's doing, and the Virginia Arts Festival mm -hmm. and what they bring in. But there is no professional production, and that's what I think what we bring that's going to be unique is the professional dancer aspect to it so hence hence Tom Tommy, is here yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what role do you play um, I play a lot of different roles through the ballet uh, it depends on we usually do around three casts of the ballet so it is a huge it ballet. Is, is a huge ballet there are over 140 people performing in this ballet and I'll dance anything from maybe Clara's father in the first act and then Cavalier in the second act or maybe one night I might do uh, perform Snow King and then Spanish. So I mean, it, it really varies. It's kind of the casting is kind of like a, a puzzle work. If you so, do you show up backstage and have to look at the costume and say, "Oh yeah, I'm that character tonight." Absolutely. We come in every day and you look at the board and there's a cast list up and your costumes are in your dressing room and whatever costume is hanging in there that day, that's what you're performing that night. Hello. And, and actually, if, and, and if there happens to be. God forbid an injury, it's like a snowball effect mm -hmm. because you have to work the puzzles. So, I mean, they, they know ahead of time what they're supposed to do, and if all right. goes according to plan, we're in good shape. So. And if you're not, it's just good entertainment. You know what? That's mm -hmm. what the beauty of live theater is. You know? <laughs> you're never going to know from the audience side. But you did an, you did an all call auction here. Or audition we did. Here. We, we did an, an audition for local dance students, and actually, we've cast almost 80 local dance students from 18 different dance schools in the Hampton Roads, Norfolk, wow. Virginia Beach area that are going to be performing in the production with our professional dancers. And um, also in the pit is going to be the Virginia Symphony. So we have live music for this production as well. Now I am fairly calm. I'm sitting here and I can remember I was actually, we were living in Detroit. Our girls were little. It's the first time they ever went to a fancy Japanese restaurant after seeing the mm -hmm. Nutcracker. Because you're really building family traditions and family stories with the Nutcracker, aren't Absolutely. You? I feel like with going to the different uh, ballet schools here and having all these kids come in, it's really the prime age where I know a lot of girls that I grew up with saw these shows and this is when they saw these ballerinas on stage and decided mm -hmm. this is really what they want what they want to do so it's really great to have so many kids from around the area come in and see this performance because they get to see what actually goes on backstage because even though the audience sees from the front all the glitz and the glamour. There's a lot of things going on backstage where the dancers are warming up. They're preparing for their well, shit. Well, especially if you don't know what character you're <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. you know, the other thing you mentioned, this is a multi-generational opportunity. You know, we see all the time in the audiences, you have, you know, the grandparents, parents, kids, all the way down, three to sometimes four generations that come, and it's a family tradition. Mm -hmm. And we've made it that way in Richmond, and we actually have performed here back uh, a few years ago, and we're excited to be back at Chrysler Hall to make it a family tradition down here. Okay, well, Brett, I gotta, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh-oh. You've got 15 seconds to tell me what the heck's going on on stage. What is the story? Um, it's really because you put us in the dark with tiny little print. I'm trying to. Okay. You know what? This is one of those easy ones that you can understand <laughs> because it's about a little girl's dream. Okay. And that's, it's about Clara's dream, actually, is what it is. I got that far. And and what you know, she dreams about the Nutcracker coming alive, and then it turns into her prince, and it takes her to the land of the sweets, where all of the characters, the gifts from the first act that she was given and that her friends were given, they come alive, and that's where you go, and that's where the diversity comes from, the different characters in the second act. So you can sit there and have the dream wash over you on December 6th through 8th at Chrysler Hall. You don't even have to think about it. You can just come and enjoy. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks for uh, bringing this to Norfolk you Sure. with the Rich Richmond Ballet of Virginia. Yep, State Ballet of Virginia. You got it. Thank okay, you. Cool. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank well, when we come back, you're going to be seeing me going on a journey where I thought I was showing up for something that didn't just happen. So stay tuned and find out what that was all about. minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy so keep them active and eating well every day 
Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. Well, I'm here in a very special building in downtown Norfolk, and upstairs on the 20th floor is Moonlight and Mistletoe, an awesome event for the holidays that you're going to want to join me on. So let's go on up and join the fun. Gosh, this doesn't really look right. Lisa Coleman, I, I thought I was coming to the big event for the holiday. You are. You're here. This is it. Well, um, it doesn't seem ready. Well, we're almost ready. We've set a table just for you. Cool. When is this event? We are having our event on Saturday, December 7th. Oh, December yes. 7th. I'm a couple of months early. Just a bit. Explains. Okay, what is this event that I'm coming to? This is going to be called Moonlight and Mistletoe. It's the inaugural event for us of this event. It's going to take the place of some wonderful events that we've had for both 30 and 50 years, respectfully. So we are going to do something new and different. This event will go towards the establishment of the King's Daughters Human Donor Milk Bank, which is very exciting for us. I believe there are 12 of them currently in the country. This will allow us to supply much needed human breast milk for the neonatal intensive care babies that we treat currently in our hospital. It's life-saving treatment for them. Having been through the uh, NIC unit, they're just tiny little babies, so they must not be consuming much milk either, though. No, they're not, but the treatment that we would like them to have is approximately, depending on their stability and, and their issues, approximately four weeks of this breast milk. And currently, we get that shipped to us from other hospitals around the country. Now we'll be able to supply our own with donors from the community through our own donor milk bank. Now, Lisa, I, I know that you're not a doctor, so I'm not going to get too detailed on this, but you, know, you would think that uh, all the modern technology would produce a formula that would be awesome, but there's really nothing better than human milk, right? There really isn't, and obviously there are many other things that they add to this milk once they receive it, but they call it liquid gold because this really is something this special that they can't reproduce the uh, what's in there, so this is why they need it. It's very important that they use human donor breast milk. You're going to overlay it with one heck of an event, and you picked one heck of a site, right? <laughs> we were very lucky that SL Nelsbaum and Wells Fargo have let us use this facility for, this e for the evening, and we thought this would be a great place to start the kickoff of a new event. Great views of the city. The holiday lights will be on in the city of Norfolk, so we're looking forward to being able to look throughout 360-degree view of the place, so you'll be able to see the wonderful lights in the city while you're having dinner, and then we'll move on to a little dancing later after you've spent all your money at our live auction. This is one heck of a spread, but where are the chairs? Well, we figured for today you would just stand, but obviously once we get 400 people in here, we'll have plenty of chairs for you to sit and dine at. Now, it looks like it's a sit-down dinner. Is it going to be a sit-down? It is indeed, yes. Served by who? Served by Cuisine and Company. Lisa, you guys have a reputation of doing over-the-top events, but you really do them with a reasonable budget. How do you pull that oh, off? Oh, gosh, yes, a very small budget, hopefully, because we want to be able to give all of our funds back to CHKD. So we rely heavily on our wonderful volunteers, our King's Daughters, people in the community, our sponsors. This year's presenting sponsors of Moonlight and Mistletoe will be Town Bank and Paul and Brenda Sharp. So without their generosity, things like this couldn't happen. Okay, now you're going to be transposing that white wall into magic, right? This is going to kind of be our main stage area where Scott Freeman, our auctioneer, and Vince Pilato, our MC, will kind of head up the evening. They'll tell us a little about why we're here. They're also going to help us with our live auction. And we do also have a very special award that we're going to be giving for the first time ever in honor of Dr. Donald Lewis, who passed away, who was a, a doctor at CHKD. So it will be the Dr. Donald Lewis Award. Cool, and this is the first year for that. Yes, it is. That's awesome. Okay, you got some other magic going around the corner, which you said is going to be the auction? Nope, the auction, the live auction will be in here, but we also have a silent auction that will lay out through there, as well as our band, our dance floor, and a little lounge area. Ooh, let's head on over there right. then. Yes, this area right here in the middle will be the lounge area. So there'll be some couches, some cocktail rounds for people to be able to mingle, network, listen to the music. Band will be over here. And then we'll have an area that's sectioned off for the catering at the other end. Now, Lisa, you had a committee that really came up with this vision. We've got to mention who they are. 
We have a wonderful committee of about 15 people. We have a wonderful, two wonderful ladies, Sunny Sonner and Lynn Reed, who are our co-chairs for the event. And we have some wonderful people helping us with the decor, obviously, because this is a, a clean, empty space that we have to fill. And then we've got our, our people working on our sponsorships, our live auction packages, our silent auction items. We've got some great luxury packages that we're going to be having in our silent auction in this side of the room, too, that are things that we've put together that we feel are a little special. Now, we have not exposed where we are at <laughs> until this moment. We are on the 20th floor of which building? The Wells Fargo Center. That's right. And that, that in, in itself represents a new generation of buildings, right. a new vision for the city of Norfolk and for the Hampton Roads area. Right. So what better place to have a brand new event than right here? That's what we thought. So we hope you can join us. Well, and I tell you what, I understand that it's, you're limiting the, the crowd to how many? It'll be approximately 400, 450. And that sounds like um, a lot, but uh, you better get those tickets now because they're going to go fast. Oh, absolutely. We've already sold quite a few tables, and we've got some great sponsors coming on board. So we hope that you can get your table soon. Wait, how much is a ticket and how much is a table? Let's start selling them. <laughs> the tables are $2,500. That's the corporate table. We hope to sell hopefully 25 or 30 of those, and then we have a single ticket price, which is $125. Lisa, thanks for bringing, with your committee, thanks for bringing a brand new event. And I know about 450 people that are going to want to be here on December 7th. At what time? 6 o'clock. Not today. Not today. No, okay. I can't feed you today. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to head on back to the studio. Thanks for everything that you do to really put CHKD and King's Daughters on the map right here in Thank Norfolk. You. Thanks a lot. Every year, thousands of pets at Norfolk's largest animal shelter are looking for a new home. Visit the Norfolk Animal Care and Adoption Center today. Somebody in here is waiting for somebody out there. Be there, somebody. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. I was just told that the admirals were on the road, so you can buy your tickets. Remember, it's December 7th, not today. And I think the admirals are playing a role that night too. Uh, Alex Reed, Director of Communications for the Norfolk Animals. You know all about it, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I know that uh, we're going to be donating some items to, to the event uh, that'll be up for, as part of that auction, so obviously for a good cause. And um, you know, we're always glad to, uh, to be helpful in any kind of donations uh, here in our community and um, in any events that we can be at. You are a major part of this community, even though you're going to be on the road that that day. Winning, of course, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> that might be a question for, for, for Nolan here, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it's, it's been a winning tradition here. Now going on 25 years uh, here, it's hard, hard to believe that uh, uh, the team's been around that long, but you know, that's all about uh, you know, the community support and, and the team giving back to the community. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I like the way he pawned the question about winning or losing onto you, Nolan. Did you catch that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is our responsibility, right? So, yeah. yeah, so what's going to happen on December 7th we, when you're out of town somewhere? We'd sure like to think it's a win, for sure. So. <laughs> what happens when it's not a win? Well, it's obviously a, um, morale a little bit of a low, but you know what? It's a long season, and we try to rebound, and uh, you get the next game. You never want to lose two in a row. Well, I was going to say, with those football guys, uh, they have to run up and down the steps. What do you have to do the day <laughs> yeah. after? we got to skate up and down the ice. Yeah. Is that what it yeah. <laughs> is? That oh, yeah. It? So, okay, i got to bring that up, uh, Nolan, because when you're not sitting down, when you're standing up, you're a big guy. Yeah, 6'6". Six, six, so. so put the skates on you? Another two to three inches, so I guess I get up there. Okay. So... What do you like about playing hockey? I, th I think just the passion of the game. You start when you're a young kid playing. I mean, I started skating when I was about three years old, and, and you, you play for the love of the game, and I still do. And uh, as you develop, you, I guess you learn that you might be pretty good at it, and your parents push you in, in, in positive ways, and, and you just go up through the ranks, and then hopefully your dream comes true to become a professional player. Now, where, where, where are you from originally? I'm originally from Punishai, Saskatchewan, Canada. All right, so when you first strapped on those skates, were you on a rink or on a pond? I believe it was uh, our own arena. I was lucky enough that my father had ran the small town arena. My town is almost a village of only 200 people, so he helped out at the arena, and before I was going to school, I was able to go with him to the arena and skate on the ice. Okay, because the biggest panic I ever had was when I lived in Detroit and I'm on skates on a, on a lake. And yeah. And the cracking noise, that. Eh. Because yeah. you don't get that in a rink. No, no. <laughs> you shouldn't anyway. You shouldn't anyway. <laughs> but you just said something key. A small town, but yet there was an investment in the arena. Okay, you get down to Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. It's not it's, the same. And yet, Alex, the passion of the fans 
is unbelievable, isn't it? Oh, it really is. I mean, uh, hockey fans in general, no matter where you go, what market, uh, their fans are pretty passionate about the game. I mean, it, it is. It's an intense game, and the players, as Nolan said, they're passionate about it. So obviously, it kind of goes into the stands there as well. And um, like I said, we've been here 25 years. It's uh, Admirals Hockey, and uh, um, you know, that wouldn't have. It would be the case if the fans, uh, you know, didn't enjoy it, they weren't passionate. And about they're seasoned. I mean, they're. Well, in fact, I, I, I shot that last piece we were just in, in a tux, and actually, one of the last times I was in a tux. Besides that, I was sharing an elevator at uh, the Chrysler Gar or Scope Garage with hockey fans. It was kind yeah. of an interesting. We, the ballet was in one building, <laughs> and hockey in the other. And I think that shows the diversity of our of our town. Oh, no doubt. And you know, I mean, people love sports. Sports brings communities together. And uh, you know, obviously, having the hockey team here is is no different. So uh, uh, we got great fans, no doubt about it. And, and that building gets rocking, and it's a, it's one of the it's one of the loudest in the area. Okay, the I got league. a couple of questions for you because when I teased this segment, I referred to a hat trick. I really don't know what a hat trick is. A hat trick, uh, that's uh, three goals uh, scored in a game. In fact, it just happened the other night in our first uh, game, the home opener. Uh, you know, our, our, one of our players, uh, Alex Grant, uh, was able to get a hat trick. So that's three goals in, in one period, and, uh, or in one game, but he did it in one period. Now, Nolan, as a defenseman, though, you don't get a chance to go for that, though, do you? Not as much, no. There's another hat trick. It's called a Gordy Howe hat trick, where you get a goal, an assist, and a fight in the game. And that's a, that's a different kind of hat trick. I was hoping somebody would bring up fighting. Because <laughs> that's what hockey used to be about. But now you're the softer, kinder hockey, right? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say <laughs> kinder. Forget but, he's here, by the way. But there is a little bit less uh, fighting in the game. I think that's more, the game is developing to a lot more uh, speed and skill of players. And these new players that are younger generations have uh, skating and, and, and the puck handling skills are, are getting really impressive and I think the game is really going to that level where teams of uh, and, and general managers and the game feels as though they'd rather see the games won on the scoreboard than on the ice. Some fans may not agree with that uh, but that's typically how the game is developing. So if there's a victory, great fight, awesome victory. Yeah. If there's no victory, they don't even talk about the fight, huh? Well, you never know. You never <laughs> know. The, fan, the home fans, if there's a loss, they sometimes still enjoy the fight. Okay, we got about uh, 30 seconds left. Alex, sell a ticket. All right. Why should somebody come to a hockey game? Well, we, you know, obviously, we got a great group of guys here, uh, you know, both on and off the ice. I mean, they're, they're out here uh, in the community, you know, serving the community here, and they do it because, uh, you know, they, they love the area here. And it's always nice to have the fans uh, come in and, and show that support back at, with, with a packed house at Scope. Um, you know, a lot of big events coming on, uh, you know, just after the, the, the holiday season there, or I should say Thanksgiving, we have skate with the teams uh, following uh, the games and stuff. So um, th there's a lot of reasons to like this team, uh, both from a, you know, an entertainment standpoint and, of course, just, you know, it's family fun entertainment. That's kind of our, our motto. Cool. And I do want to say, I think it's appropriate, we started off by saying how you all give back, because you do give back to the community and you provide an opportunity for the community to give at the hockey game. So yeah. thanks for everything that you're doing to not only bring great sport to the to town, but also a conscience of doing what's right. All right. Appreciate Thank you. It. Appreciate it. Go out there and win them because he's going to lay it on you if you don't. I'm sure <laughs> try. That's all about. Hey, we want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood? Give us a holler, 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you, you, and you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bob.